Good morning, physics students, and welcome to another episode of Finzix. It's Mr. Finn coming at you from neighborly Northdale with, of course, our sunset in the background painting. Hopefully you guys are doing well today. A uh, couple of notes today. Uh, we have a Google form on series parallel circuits coming out tomorrow, our Friday stuff. So make sure that you are getting a little bit of study uh, on that. I'll do some review on that, obviously, but we're going to actually be doing uh, compound circuits today. So we will be reviewing both parallel and series over the next few episodes. Now, make sure you're paying attention in the next few episodes. Compound circuits can be very confusing, so I need you to walk through those examples. Obviously, do your homework. Uh, maybe walk through these videos more than once or slow them down, replay certain parts if you need to. Uh, the FET simulation lab, that came out yesterday. I'm going to give you guys a chance, obviously, to keep doing that. Try to get that in by the end of the week. Um, hopefully you're doing okay with that. I know that's a fairly easy setup to, to work with, and it should provide us with some uh, basic idea of how to work with circuits how to make circuits, how to measure things in circuits. So, those are the cool things going on from the last couple days. But let's look at a compound circuit. Now, we can actually have two different kinds of compound circuits. Well, there actually, there's many kinds, but two main types. We can work with a series shell with a little parallel part mixed in there, or we can work with a parallel shell with a little series mixed in there. Now I'm going to do both, and I'll do a couple of versions of both, one for each day. But today, I'm going to start with the parallel shell and the little series mixed in there. Ultimately, guys, we have to use resistor reduction to break it down into either all parallel or all series. And in the case of doing so, we must redraw in every case, at every step, because there's some things that we need to take back from those redraws back into the original circuit. So I'll explain how that's going in just a few minutes. Okay, well, let's get started, guys. Okay, guys, now hopefully you can see this okay. We have, oh, I forgot to draw a voltage in there. Let's make it a 12 volt supply. That's a nice easy number. <clears throat> so I have a 12 volt supply. This looks very much like a straight parallel circuit. That's great. We know how to do those. Except <clears throat> in branch one, we have resistor one with a 5 ohm, resistor two with a 3 ohm. So those particular series, those particular resistors are in series together. The 5 and the 3 are in series together. <clears throat> then we have resistor 3 with a 6 ohm down here in the second row, and resistor 4 with a 2 ohm. Hmm, 6 and a 2. Those are also in series with each other, but the combination of the 6 and the 2 and the 5 and the 3 are in parallel with each other. Now, one thing you can think of is if your current is in the first line. You can draw a little green current there. That green current must go through both resistors. If you're going through the 3 ohm, it means you have to go through the 5 ohm. I'll also draw a pink line down below. So if you have the pink current, once you determine what that current is, it's going to be the same current in both resistors. If you'll remember, one of the rules of series is it was the same current throughout the entire circuit. Well, think of just this branch as its own series. So it's got to have only one current through that. Now, I'm going to draw a blue line representing the total current. As you can see in this example, there are no resistors up in the total area. This won't always be the case, but it is going to be the case today for our simple example. 
Okay, guys, how do we approach a problem like this? Well, the number one thing is we're going to use our method for resistor reduction to break the circuit down until we have only one all parallel or all series setup. We need to redraw the circuit to make that happen. Redraw the circuit to make that happen. So I'll do that right now. Okay guys, that's my redraw. Now, what would those circuits, if I was to take out these two resistors and replace them with one equivalent that did exactly the same job, I wonder what that would be. Well, I have a 3 and a 5 and they're in series. If resistors are in series, we know we can add those resistors together. So that's going to be an 8 ohm resistor. The same is true for the other route. A 6 and a 2 are also in series with each other. Therefore, we can add those resistors together. And you get an 8 and an 8. Now guys, we're not done yet. But we do have a spot where it's all parallel at this point. So if we were going to evaluate a parallel circuit, still with a 12 volt supply, we should be able to know how much current is flowing through each branch. 12 volts applies to 8 ohms. Here's where you have to go to your, your parallel rule right away. What's the first thing we do when we recognize it's a parallel circuit? Don't forget to look back at your rules on page 553. One of the first things we do is we apply Ohm's law separately to each branch. Let's do that real quick. Okay guys, so what I did here is I took 12 volts and I divided by 8 ohms. This is applying ohms law separately to this new parallel redraw. Now guys, this isn't a new circuit. All I did was remove the two resistors in each branch and replace them with an equivalent resistor. A resistor that would do exactly the same thing electrically. So I have 8 ohms and 8 ohms, and I have 12 volts to applying to that 8 ohms to give me 1.5 amps. Now this line says, or this little arrows, these little arrows, are suggesting that there's 1.5 amps in each branch. Now, I'm asking, one of the things I'm asking for over here, I'm asking for voltage across R1, voltage across R2, current total, and current resistance. Well, I wonder if you could tell me what the current total would be now. The current total, hopefully you guys can understand that, would be 3 amps. Now, why would it be 3 amps? Because it's one and a half for each branch here. I have that in purple. Well, actually, it's blue. I have that in purple. So if I have one and a half amps, in each branch, and there's two branches, that means that my total current would be 3 amps. Now, I actually have that drawn up here in my original circuit as blue. So I'll put a blue dot by it. I recommend using the colored pencils to keep it straight between your redraws. Now, what else could we determine? I wonder how we could determine voltage across R1. Did you look back at the series example? One of the things that we did to determine the voltage was we took the current through the resistor multiplied by the resistor's value. We have the resistor's value of 5 ohms and 3 ohms according to R1 and R2. So really, what this will end up being is the current through it, which we already know is 1.5 amps. So I'm going to draw this up. 1.5 amps. I'm going to draw that in green, even though it gives me purple here. So 1.5 amps goes through R1. 
B equals IR. So what's R1's value? It's five volts. So what's 1.5 amps times five ohms? That's 7.5 volts. So now we found the voltage across R1. What about the voltage across R2? That's another thing we're supposed to find. And there's a reason why I wrote both of those in the same branch. I could use the same method. 1.5 amps times the 3 ohm resistor. Remember in series, I can multiply the current through the resistor by the resistor's value. So what did I get in here? 4.5 volts. And I may have already said you recognized something. Hey guys, in this branch, what is 7.5 plus 4.5? Ironically, it's equal to 12. Because of point A here and point B, which we've already studied a couple of times, the voltage from A to B must be the same as the total voltage because we're going across the entire branch. Point B is electrically the same as the front of the battery. I'm sorry, point A. Point B is electrically the same as the back of the battery. Therefore, the voltage from A to B must be the same across both full branches. Individually, though, the voltage is split because once we get into that branch, it's a series connection. That's a little bit tricky, guys, so make sure you get a chance to review that. How about resistor total? That's the only thing we have left to find here. Well, remember we could do two things. We could do total voltage divided by total current. 12 volts divided by 3 amps, which would give us 4 ohms of resistance, 4 ohms total. But we can also take these two 8 ohms, and we know those 8 ohms are in parallel. And how do I combine resistors in parallel? According to the shortcut the other day, remember, R EQ is R times R over R plus R. Let's take those 8 ohms. 8 ohms times 8 ohms over 8 ohms plus 8 ohms. That's going to be 64 ohms squared over 16 ohms. Ohms cancels with ohms. What's 16, 64 divided by 16? It's exactly 4 ohms. I recommend going through that separately, guys. It's a little bit tricky. It's our first combination circuit. And I'll do a few of them over the next couple days to make sure that you're okay. It's kind of tricky. This is one of the trickier parts of physics in general, in terms of the electricity connectivity section. So make sure you get a chance to go over those. There's a couple extra good homework problems that have combination circuits towards the end of the unit. So make sure you get a chance to look at those. And we'll go over more examples like this over the next few days and give you plenty of practice. Okay, guys, let's wrap up now. Well, guys, there's no substitute for practice. One of the things you want to make sure you do when you have combination circuits is you reduce it down until you get to all series or all parallel. And from that, we can build it back up, bringing back certain values to our original circuit. In this case, we broke it down to all parallel. And we found those branch currents, and we brought those currents back to the original circuit and apply them to those series connections. I'll be available for Google Meets next week, guys, but get a chance to do this and, uh, and check it out. Go through the uh, video slowly. I'm also going to make sure I give you a chance to look at Crash Course Physics, uh, one of those videos for uh, your video segment, rather than me doing it every single day. But I'll wait till Monday for that. Okay, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.